Good day then, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am going to be trying to create some videos that will support people in teaching mathematics using manipulatives, and in particular, in making sense of mathematical ideas using manipulatives. Uh, and today I've picked a topic that is very close to my heart. It's one that I'm very passionate about. It's the division of fractions. We all have procedures and procedures we well know for division of fractions and these procedures are relatively straightforward for learners to, to learn about but where do these procedures come from? How is it that a, fra a division could, becomes a multiplication? And that's kind of what I want to explore with us today. So we're going to look at a particular fraction division. We're going to look at the division two fifths divided by three quarters. And if we're going to represent these fractions using Cuisinaire rods, then one of the things we have to be really clear about is the size of our whole. Fractions will only make sense in relation to their whole, into the value of one. So if I'm thinking about the fraction two fifths, then I need to be thinking about, okay, well, what does my one whole look, look like so that I can represent two-fifths? And normally, if we're representing two-fifths, we might use this rod as one whole. And that's because this rod is five units long, if this is a unit square, it's five units long. So if we use this rod to represent one whole, then we have one-fifth. We have two fifths, we have three fifths, we have four fifths. Now, the problem with this, of course, is that I can't readily represent quarters using that. What would three quarters look like using that as one whole? And similarly, if I took that whole away, I can now say, well, now I've got quarters. I've got, if this is one whole if the purple rod here is one whole then i have one quarter and two quarters and three quarters but then what the fifths look like i can't if this is one whole if this purple rod is one whole then i can't really represent fifth using that whole so if i'm going to represent both fifths and quarters then i need a whole that will allow me to represent both fifths and quarters i need a whole that is easily divisible into five equal pieces and is easily divisible into four equal pieces. And so the whole I'm going to choose here is this whole. So I'm going to define this length to be one whole, the length of two orange rods. I don't need to use two orange rods. I could use any combination of rods that would create a length that is equivalent to that. But I'm going to use that length to represent one whole. And the reason I'm using that length to represent one whole is because now each purple rod can be thought of as one fifth. And we can see that five of those will create one whole. And similarly, each yellow rod can be thought of as one quarter. And we can see it takes four of those to represent one whole. So if I want to look at two fifths divided by three quarters, then I want to look at two of these purple rods. Alternatively, I could use one brown rod to represent two fifths there, but I'm, for now I'm leaving it like that so we can see the fifths. And I want to look at three quarters. So here now, if the combination of the two orange rods is has a value of one is one whole then this shows two fifths and this shows three quarters now the model for division we're going to use here the way of thinking about division that we're going to use here is to think about division as comparison as a multiplicative comparison literally how does this compare to this but if i if i look at that then I can see that, well, this may be two fifths and this may be three quarters. But actually, the top line is eight squares long. 
and the bottom line is 15 squares long. And so what I can say here is that two fifths compares to three quarters in the same way as eight compares to 15. And that, of course, gives us the fraction 8 fifteenths. So that's clearly the result of the division, but that doesn't really tie into the procedures we might use for division. So what sort of procedures might we use for the division? Well, one of the procedures we might use for the division is to actually rewrite the fractions as common with common denominators. And we can see here that if I was looking at these two purple rods, although I can think about them as two fifths, I can also think about them as eight out of 20. So I could convert that two fifths into eight twentieths. And similarly, the three yellow rods, although I can, might think about them as three quarters because they are three quarters of my whole, I can also think about them as 15 twentieths. So I might convert that fraction, three quarters, into 15 twentieths. And so now if I want to divide those, if I want to compare those, we can see that that will just give me the same result. However, that's not the most usual procedure that people have for division of fractions. The most usual procedure is, of course, to rewrite this as a multiplication and to say that two-fifths divided by three-quarters is the same as two-fifths times something. And the question is, how does that procedure arise from this model and this way of thinking about division? Well, the way this uh, procedure arises from this model is to redefine our whole. Because at the minute, if we have the two orange rods in total length make being one whole, then we have two fifths as the two purples and three fifth, three quarters as the three yellows. But the question would I would ask is, well, what if we redefined our whole so that now the three yellows on their own represents one whole? Well, now we can see still, we still have the 8 and the 15. So we get back to this comparison here of 8 to 15 being 8 fifteenths. But how does that motivate the procedure? Well, the way that motivates the procedure is if we say, well, if we have two fifths, and I'm going to rewrite this division slightly as over three quarters. Then what I did here is I rewrote this to be one whole. How would I do that? Mathematically speaking, what operation would I do with three quarters to turn it into one whole? Well, one of the ways I could do that is I could multiply it by four thirds. And the reason I'm choosing to do it that way is because I can keep this fraction equivalent by also multiplying the numerator by four thirds. And this will change the denominator of this fraction to be 1 without changing the overall value of the fraction. So if we now look at what we've got here, then we have 2 fifths times 3 quarters. And I'm purposefully leaving that numerator unevaluated over simply 1, 12 twelfths one whole. And of course, the point about that is I don't actually need to consider division by one. Division by one doesn't affect the result of a calculation. So actually, that calculation stays the same, even if that part goes. And we can see that the result of that division, two-fifths divided by three-quarters, has become the same as the result of this multiplication, two-fifths times four-thirds. Now, I'm not saying we should get students to do this every time. We want to divide two fractions to go through this process. But what I am saying is if we want to motivate how this division becomes this multiplication, then one of the ways we can do that is to look at that division in a comparative sense and to change the value of our whole. So to set up our whole so we can see two fifths and three quarters, 
and then to change the value of our whole so that the divisor here becomes one whole. And we can do that very nicely with quiz and air odds. And because that comes from a model of division multiplicative comparison that is useful in other cases, we can see how this links to other divisions. We can see how this division makes sense in the same way as other divisions make sense. So that's just one quick video about how we might use manipulatives to talk about division of fractions. Uh, if you've got any particular um, ideas that you'd like me to look at in terms of using manipulatives to make sense of them, then please do give me a shout uh, and I'll endeavour to try and make one, but I'm going to try and make a few of these coming out. I'd like to say thank you to MathSpot and its creator, Jonathan Hall, for the use of the virtual manipulatives. And if you've never been to MathSpot.com, then please do make sure you visit there because there are all sorts of lovely things on that website, not just the virtual manipulative section, loads of great things for the teachers of maths.